getting ready for the day out on the town. Yes. I'm getting ready to go to the shops with my astrology tote bag. prepared for that. <laughs> hmm, it's still over here. Okay, I'm gonna walk down now. There's no way you, they can hear me. <laughs> this is actually her favorite song. That's really funny. What song is this? Is this the is this the way on Jenny's? Yeah, no, this is her favorite artist. Oh, cute. Yeah. yeah, so it's a sign that I have to buy her birthday present here. How disappointed are you right now? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> she is so out of her husband's league. What the fuck? I know, I was like, oh. as soon as she said husband, I was like, oh, damn. I kept, I, didn't I look like I kept it together, though? Yeah, you I, did. I did a pretty good job. But in my head, I was like, Leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him. She is totally bi though. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, there's no way she's not queer. I know. Ugh. Bi woman, you you are your sexuality is still valid if you date men. But don't date me instead. <laughs> My name is Grace Davidson. Sylvia Rodriguez. Rebecca Jost. I identify as lesbian, a lesbian woman. I identify as a bisexual Latina, bisexual woman. I identify as gay or lesbian. So I'm Kristen Gray, and I am currently the Associate Dean for Health and Counseling and Director of Counseling and Psychological Services. Uh, my background and my degree is uh, in clinical psychology, and I came to Hope College back in 1987 I have been, uh, I took time off to get my doctorate and then came back to work at uh, counseling. And I have been with Counseling and Psychological Services. This is my 23rd fall. So being on Hope's campus has affected me as a member of the LGBTQ plus community because I felt like it took a lot longer than it would have on a different college campus to fully understand my sexuality, explore it, um, much less be out. Um, and it's also affected me in that uh, in addition to like feeling like I had to suppress this part of me and um, I didn't even fully understand what it meant to like suppress that part of me because um, I thought it was just like a some tiny facet of like maybe my personality but it's so much more than that because it's actually like who you love and because I wasn't allowing myself to explore and like accept myself for who I was um, I uh, was ending up in relationships with men that I did not connect with in any way and trying to force something to happen thinking that's like how it was supposed to be and like the effect that has on someone psychologically is like really awful. I've always been like super gay like I've been like oh yeah uh -huh. like I like girls and guys and whatever um for like a really long time so it wasn't difficult to just be me until I wanted to like talk about my romantic relationships or like a crush or if I saw someone at Phelps who was cute I was like oh wait am I like comfortable to say it like is it should I say it does are they cool like I don't really know I grew up in kind of like a Christian family my grandma is like a really really strong Christian like you know she was over here like COVID's like here because all the gay people like that was my grandma but my mom is really spiritual. My dad is also like, you know, you'll get better with herbs and, you know, um, different kinds of concoctions, but also he's like raised in like a Christian Catholic um, home. I also went to a private school when I was probably like first through third grade. So I like learned a lot of um, stories within the Bible and how they're supposed to be lived out morally. Oh yeah. So I did that. Um, two, 
Oh, it's all my angsty shit. It's embarrassing. Um, yeah. I have a bunch of poetry. I used to write a lot of poetry, actually, about being gay. This. This is, like, really old, though. I promise I've gotten better, I think. Um, but, you know. Oh, yeah, oh, that's, that's my right. favorite. That's my favorite one. I updated it digitally. Cleaned it up. Made other things symmetrical. Like, because, like I said, this was, like, years ago. I have a digital print that's way better. I submitted it to Opus, actually. I submitted some, like, queer poems. Some co poems about being, like, biracial relationships. And nothing got in, which was, like pretty like bumming but um overall i think it's just really really good stuff i think i don't know oh and then this is something my part my girlfriend got me it's one of those little like you know these guys so fun so so fun i think i've been in circles where um they're pretty open about my lack of interest in the um christian faith um but i would also say going into like more classes you're exposed to different values and opinions and kind of the same thing with my queer identity um as i've become like as i've increased my time here i've heard a lot of a lot of different opinions about faith being around people who are like going to read the bible going to a bible study praying before and after a meal um i think hasn't affected my identity too much as far as my queer identity um which I think I'm privileged in the sense of I have a very supportive mom and so I'm pretty harnessed in my identity and I, I know that a lot of queer indiv individuals especially queer people who are connected to a faith would probably struggle a lot more than I am. I came into Hope's campus being like a pretty um, devout Christian in some ways. Um, I was always like a very accepting one. I really like, it, even in high school, like hated um, the association with like homophobia and Christianity. I've always, I never like truly thought it was a sin, but um, coming to Hope and like having all these voices tell me that it was and being a Christian, like it was really hard for me to fully accept it. Yeah, when I first came to Hope, I, identify, I was identifying as bisexual. And so that I definitely kept myself closeted at Hope for the first good half of my college career. Because um, like I, you know, that Christian campus, I really didn't feel comfortable with expressing myself and I didn't feel comfortable with like talking to people about LGBT issues because that Christian stereotype of being like homophobic and closed minded didn't really um, help with my con uh, confidence of how I lived on campus and how I talked with people. So those first couple years were definitely more, more of a struggle for me to live on campus. The question about um, Christian faith and sexual orientation is a huge question. Um, and it's one that I think Hope College has, over the years, decided to keep the tension there. So Hope College has never come up with an easy answer for this. And I don't think the church has either. Um, there are some denominations, some parts of Christianity that are open and affirming and fully including um, uh, members. And there are others who for their reasons um, have said, if you identify as LGBTQ+, you need to accept a life of celibacy and not ever act on that if you are going to be included in the faith. I grew up Catholic, and so living on a Christian campus hasn't really been much different than what I'm used to. Um, the community is very friendly and very open, but it's also made it interesting as far as how people look at the people of L the LGBT community. And so it kind of has that more of like a negative condescending tone towards uh, people who are different and don't identify as like the mainstream Christian, even though I do identify as Christian as well. Honestly, Hope College has kind of made me afraid of being who I am and expressing that because I've known who I am. I just haven't been able to discuss it with friends or my peers um, because Hope College has that more like Christian conservative kind of community. And so it makes it hard for someone to be open and honest about who they are with without the fear of being ridiculed. Honestly, it creates a lot of internalized homophobia and questioning um, because I've grown up and listening to 
Catholicism and people saying like gays are going to hell and all that kind of stuff. And so I kind of create this internalized homophobia towards myself of like, I don't think like, is this actually who I am? Can I still be Christian? Does Jesus still love me? And so like that really kind of creates a lot of internal conflict and in me questioning who I am and how I can be Christian and gay at the same time because it doesn't really tend to go well in modern day. I uh, like joined Young Life right away because um, back at my hometown in Chicago, Young Life was this um, like space for Christians that was supposed to be come as you are, it was supposed to be accepting. And I had like several friends of the LGBTQ plus community that did Young Life with me there. And we talked about all this stuff together and I wanted to continue um, like spiritual transformation uh, with like this lens of acceptance. And um, I, right when I joined, uh, I like right off the bat, like met several homophobic people and was, it was like really terrifying because I wanted that to be like my friends, but um, I didn't, I was like, I felt like right away I had to choose, like I can either like stay in the closet for four years and like have this like awesome community of people that are, um, going to like walk with me spiritually in some way or I could like leave something that has been really important to me spiritually. But like leading there was really scary because I was like friend, I was really good friends with like a lot of the high school students there and I just always knew that like the second I would come out like I would have parents going after me, I would have like the staff going after me, like I it just it was very terrifying and um, I just was more and more aware every day that I liked women a lot. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not involved with Young Life at all. Yeah, I was considering joining in my first couple years and I was doing Young Life leader training my freshman year um, so that I could join and lead a group of high schoolers. But the more time went on, the, re the more I realized that like I wasn't gonna be able to support an organization that didn't support me and that I would have to tell Young Life kids that the organization didn't support them when my values definitely don't align with Young Life. Young Life reminds me so much of Hope College culture and this like f fake like acceptance, this fake come as you are where like right when you get into it and like you start trying to like explore your religion and Christianity, um, it's actually like not accepting and they're not gonna like allow you to explore that um, part of you. So um, a lot of my Hope College experience to be honest has just been um, like learning how to respect myself in ways to like um, cut off activities cut off people that have been treating me um, less than I deserve just because of who I am. There certainly have been open, very clear kind of aggressive discrimination, um, acts of discrimination at Hope. And again, if we look at the parallel with racism, I would say that, and sexism, I'll add that one in, so that trifecta, right? homophobia, sexism, and racism, um, that a lot of that tends to be done in a way that's a little undercutting, a little on the side, a little statement that's made, a little question that's asked, a little comment, um, the way someone is looked at, um, a comment that's made so that, the per that a few people will hear it, but maybe not an entire classroom. It was really, really late on a, I think Friday night, like m like midnight going into Saturday of Friday. Um, I was hanging out in my room. I like looked out my window and I saw like this tall, skinny white dude like coming up to our um, house. And so I live in Schreier Cottage, which is like the, the, the um, Spanish house, like women of color usually like live there right now where a majority women of color um, house and so like you know I look out and there's this like tall skinny white dude with brown hair and just like runs up to our house and I was like oh maybe they're here to like talk to someone um, and then they just kind of ran up and then ran off and I was like oh so eventually I went downstairs to go check well check out like what was what was up if they had left something so I could take it up to you know my housemate um, and I didn't see anything and I was like oh they didn't leave anything um, went back upstairs, went to bed, woke up the next day. We had the Trump anti, anti Trump for, anti evangelist for Trump protest. So, like a protest against um, the like meeting that was happening at Baker's Lofts. Um, I was getting ready for that. 
and I was going to go with my housemate, Michaela, and we walked outside, and I was like, oh, some, like, white dude came up last night, and he was by our door, and then I look, and I look at, like, our little brown, um, you know, like, triangle plaque that says, like, Schreier Cottage, um, and it has, like, a pro-life Trump sticker on it, and, like, I was livid, like, kid you not, I was livid. I took this picture, I wrote this Facebook post, like, from my house to the stop sign, finished it, uploaded it. I've never really experienced anything like that before. And again, like, don't know if this was a Hope person, don't know if it was a, you know, Holland community person. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, I, I really do think, like, Hope loves to say, you know, we're a private institution, we have da 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 and we can make our own and forge our own path, and da 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 and we stand against, we stand for this, you know, but, like, when it comes to protecting your women of color, when it comes to protecting your underserved and underrepresented students, when are you going to like, again, exude that confidence of like, we're a private institution and you cannot do this to our institution, to the property of our institution, right? Um, so that same, like, where's that energy? What was gonna happen? I was petrified. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know that a lot of people within the United States have ideas that ideals that align with tend to be, uh, tend to align with racism and white supremacy and um, hatred and especially as the current president um, will not condemn white supremacy up front and he will not address any instances of hatred as they need to be handled part of my teaching as a psychologist was to look at what is the root of the root so someone says I really hate people who are gay. And I think, okay, let's, let's look at what is the root of that. So I might say, talk to me about that. Tell me a little bit about that. And they might begin to talk about what they learned in church. And I'll ask, um, we can talk then about how does that feel to you? Does that fit with who you are? Um, sometimes when we talk about the root of the root, though, it will go not into an idea, right, or a theology, right? So a theology is one thing. This is what I was taught. But sometimes it really is around fear, and it's around fear of something that is different. And I think that if we look at discrimination and hate, so often it's around fear. It's about something we don't understand. It's about something that we aren't familiar with. It might be something that feels threatening. So if, if this is what I know, and this is how I define something, and you tell me that you have this whole other way of being in the world, that might make me question my own, what I've always known. And so I think fear sometimes is that root of the root. As a woman, both a woman of color and someone in the LGBT community, I was petrified of the results. Um, I didn't want to be on campus at all, um, knowing that there are people who definitely align with the views of the current president. Um, there were some even organizations that have a Trump flag in their window on, on their on-campus house. And they are organizations that are endorsed by Hope College. And many people I've interacted with, we don't believe that an, any organization endorsed by Hope College should be able to display a political candidate on campus property, because um, that represents Hope College. And so that really just shows how, how many issues we have to deal with. Because um, at this point, it's not a matter of political candidates and like beliefs of like, Democratic or Republican, it's a matter of human rights um, and what your values align with. And so just to be on campus with that kind of political tension made me terrified because I know that people don't believe that I should have rights because of who I love or what the color of my skin is or the fact that I'm a woman. And so I just really hated the election um, because of that. I have to put in this extra energy to find my people just living in Holland. Um, it took me honestly two years to find um, a community of accepting people at Hope's campus. Uh, I feel like I am um, 
constantly going through this, should I be very much out in what I wear um, in order to find the select few gay people in this town? Or should I completely hide what I, um, my identity in order to protect myself from all the homophobic and potentially violent people in this uh, town? Um, which is like a really hard thing to navigate. Every single time I see like uh, a clearly cis, white, straight man, um, I honestly feel afraid and I have flashbacks to all like the horrible, demeaning, sexualized things that um, straight men have told me just because of my sexuality and I just feel like I have to be on guard all the time. Um, I feel like I never want any men to ever know my sexuality because of that. Um, I feel like I don't want any of the Christian homophobic women to know my sexuality because of that, but I also need to be very open about my sexuality in order to find this select few <laughs> gay people on this campus. Um, because besides just like being lesbian in my identity, I actually like do want to date people. Um, I'm in college, so. At Hope? At Hope? What's the dating scene? Garbage. The dating scene is g trash. Yeah, the dating s scene in Holland area and Hope's campus really sucks. Um, as a person who identifies with the LGBT community, we all end up being friends with one another, but aren't really each other's type for dating. Or like if we do, we somehow end up being friends anyway. It's really complicated. There are a lot of extra facets that straight people do not have to deal with. That's why I get really, really frustrated whenever straight women say, oh, I wish I was lesbian so I don't have to deal with men. No, it's like so much more complicated. If dating in college should not be this hard, it should be incredibly easy, actually. But no. And you know what else? I don't like that a lot of the white women here dress like they're lesbians. Don't cuff your pants. Uh, it's just harder because like the default is heterosexual and so like I can't just like walk up to a woman at a coffee shop that I think is pretty unless they have like a ton of signals that they're gay. Oh, that's a key part of the dating scene. Um, we all are like finding little secret codes and signals to like show to women that um, we're gay or po and possibly open to dating. So you don't have to like out yourself all the time of like, yeah, you know, I'm like not everyone wants to be like I'm a raging lesbian. Right? Some people just want to cuff their pants and, you know, oh, she cuffs her pants. Don't cuff your pants if you're not gay. I'm saying that right here, right now. Decla declaration. Please don't cuff your pants if you're not gay. We're queer. Thank you very much. I fit some of the stereotypes, like I'll wear my Carhartt beanie, but that's also become more of a fashion trend, which I don't know how to identify other LGBT women on campus because of that but like I'll wear my Carhartt beanie, I wear my flannels, like I fit stereotypes and I ride my longboard. And so sometimes I'm like, I'm the stereotypes that fit within the gay community, but also like people at Hope are also just find that style for themselves. And so it's kind of hard to stand out and show myself as like, hey, I'm gay when I look like everyone else now. Look at what I've turned to, lollipops on my ears. This isn't professional. <laughs> it's what I have to do now. <laughs> Soon enough, like those signals become trends and then uh, straight women adopt them and then we all get confused. Um, like bandanas, for example. I used to think that like if a woman was wearing a bandana, then she um, was gay and I could hit on her. <laughs> and now I do not think that <laughs> because it's just become a trend. Uh, and so it's just exhausting that I have to like keep up with these random things that mean nothing. And I like wish I did not have to do that work. Flannels are gay. Flannels are gay. If you're going to wear like tights and like something baggy on top, please make it a knit sweater. Don't make it a flannel. I feel really bad for any woman on this campus that are still closeted because uh, there's not really much you can do. <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way. It's also just complicated because like, again, we don't know what we're doing. We don't have proper education. I, the only like, um, education I have again is TikTok and uh, like the two shows about lesbians like Euphoria and I like I love Euphoria but like I really should not use that as any guideline ever. <laughs> Hope is just really really friendly and Hope is really community based and relationship based so like getting a coffee with your professor or something is super normal and talking like outside of class and just you know wanting to connect with someone is super duper normal right? 
so that's great um you know but it's hard if you're like kind of like a shy gay and you want to be like do you want to go get coffee you know that's hard that's hard to do like I've had several instances this semester where it really feels like women are hitting on me and then I like finally allow myself to like kind of somewhat pursue it back um, and then I find out that like they definitely didn't like me or they have a boyfriend or something like that and it's just like very um, a lot of heartbreak yeah no I've like often been like hey do you want to like hang out and then he will be like yeah and I'll be like because you're cute and I'm cute so I think together we'd be really cute you know and then like that emoji where it's like and then they're like oh and you know I'm not or I'm seeing someone but you're great I'm like okay well fine so like I don't want to go get coffee though <laughs> like I have coffee in my room could hope be doing more to make students feel safer I think yes and I also think that we're in a really interesting place being a conservative Christian school, um, especially like a Christian campus that is um, pretty strong and pretty open about their faith. And I think that unless Hope has a statement or Hope has a way of like practicing and living out being open, open and affirming to queer individuals as a part of being a Christian, then there's still going to be kind of open to um, Christian individuals who feel that homosexuality is like a sin, like a moral sin or a disease. Um, and I think that if hope doesn't fill the gaps of thought um, with like their clear stances, and if hope doesn't get the department like heads and dean people align with that, then at the end of the day, we're still going to have students who can give these death threats, who can spit at people, who can push people, who can use the F slur. Hope College also doesn't really know the students that well, I would say. Um, yes, they want us to feel safe, but it's also more of like an oblivious kind of environment that the faculty just kind of believes that we're all like, we're all happy, we're all safe, we're all loved. Um, and they like preach that, but they don't do anything to make sure that we're really safe and feel that safety on campus. And so students kind of, we decided to take it into our own hands, knowing that Hope College wasn't really going to do much unless we actually stood up and made sure that our voices were heard. So before there was PRISM, the college, uh, based on its policy statements, did not allow a student organization that um, that was basically a gay straight alliance, which um, I think PRISM is, is, uh, is an organization like that. Um, so the college allowed there to be a, um, what they referred to as a round table and the sexuality round table was uh, supported initially by Steve Hugerworth and then by some other faculty um, and staff. Uh, Jeff Tyler, I believe, was the most recent faculty member who was supporting that that group, and uh, the the round table was a place where students could have discussions about issues around sexuality. And then there was also a, su a supportive group called Globe, um, and Globe was uh, was and still is uh, more of a coming out group. So Globe is a group that is um, private. It is for students who identify as LGBTQ+, not for allies. Um, you reach out to Globe and find out about it by emailing globe at hope.edu, and someone will get back to you and talk to you about what the group is about and whether it's right for you to join or not. Their meetings are not publicized. So that's a closed meeting, but it's for students who are not uh, probably out to friends or family and who are exploring what it means to be out. Uh, certainly there are some upperclassmen who help facilitate that. It's all peer run. It's not run by um, the college. Um, it has had the support of CAPS for all the years that it's been in existence. So CAPS is the the kind of the home base for that group. Um, if they need help reserving rooms or um, if they want to get 
back in the day if they wanted to get pizza um, we could make that happen of course that's not happening this year um, but uh, yeah so we we provide kind of support for that group and that group provides support for each other so that's been around a long time but not a place for allies Gerald Griffin and I are the two advisors for PRISM. PRISM is a student organization that started about a year ago. Um, and like all student organizations at Hope College, it was a group of students who put together, wrote a constitution. They worked with Ellen Awad in student life and went through the process to become an official student group, student organization. So yeah, they've been officially around for about a year and a half. Uh, Emily Wolf, who used to go here, um, now goes by M. Wolf. They um, they created a final project for their women and gender studies class, and this final project was to be like, if oh, if you could do anything at Hope, what would you do? Blah blah blah. blah. And so M. created Prism, like it was their final project. Like this is a student org. Um, that I want to exist. This is what I would do. This is the constitution. This is how it would function. From that, PRISM went to talk, like this idea, this project, I think went from the professor to Dr. Gray or M was consulting with Dr. Gray. Dr. Gray presented it to Ellen and Dr. Gray is Dr. Kristen Gray um, at, at CAPS. And so Kristen takes this to Ellen. Ellen Awad, Ellen Awad, Dr. Ellen is like, all right, yes, let's get this on an agenda. And then PRISM happens. Um, yeah. And in the spring, we kind of find out, like, or early, early before the spring happens, we find out, like, we're going to be an org. And it's like, oh, my gosh. Like, okay, we're going to be an org. We don't have a budget. We have no money. Um, we barely have an e-board. We had M, um, me, uh, Katie, Owen, um, I think two allies as well you know and um we were like we're having a coming out party because we're here like we're freaking finally here after how many years like not even just like the past four right like the 80s as well had people advocating for um a queer organization and stuff so we had our party it was great a lot of people came out super emotional oh my god like no one saw but i was crying like i was crying up like at the little you know dj podium um because for all the work and all like the running around and buying balloons and doing all this administrative stuff and these meetings with 95 um, and late nights, like 3 a.m. stuff, like we were finally here and people liked us and that was really exciting. So yeah, um, that's kind of how, how PRISM came to be from my perspective. I don't think PRISM is enough. Um, I think that, like, so PRISM during COVID and, like, this past summer, PRISM was hard at work um, making proposals um, and writing letters and writing emails to people. And I still continue these conversations now. Um, we need an open and affirming, like, queer ministry faculty member like we need that i really want there to be like a group for people who are part of the lgbt community and also identify as christians that way there could be like that kind of like group experience um like there's young life college and then there's also like prism but those are two very separate things and so i want there to be like a group that people can like come and feel like they can identify with both the Christian community and the LGBT community. Hope College has been more leaning towards um, change and towards being better. And so especially with their current president, he's working towards including more people and showing everyone that they're loved. And so I think now as Hope College tries to do better, Hope College might be more accepting towards that. And yes, it will still have some animosity um, against like having those two groups kind of combined but I think there is more potential now than there was even like five years ago. There have to, there's so many, so much more queer Christians on this campus than we're like saying. There's so many, like there's so much more. 
And any recent Hope grad will tell you that these closeted, you know, Christian kind of people are looking for someone to understand and someone to talk to. Um, and it's hard to battle your faith and your sexuality. Um, so we need someone who's queer, both side A and side B of, you know, being, being queer and being a Christian, not just like, you know, well, you're gay, well, you have to be celibate for the rest of, for the rest of your life. Um, that's fine. Some people think that that's the answer and some people don't. Um, so we need someone who knows both of those things. We need a queer, um, you know, administrative person. We need someone in CDI or student life who knows um, queer people, queer theory, queer feminism. Um, so there's a lot that I think Hope needs um, to provide for the queer community. Um, yeah. Yeah. Prism is not enough. I also just feel like uh, it's really hard to find, again, um, education, and I feel like there's so many forces, um, really powerful forces fighting against um, education that uh, is considerate of the very present LGBTQ plus community. I feel grateful that there are forces at Hope College's administration that are fighting for the LGBTQ plus community, that they have um, just stood up to the donors and decided to um, allow PRISM and uh, different therapy groups to exist anyway, but um, yeah, just, it's, I don't know. I just like still am very, feel like caught in this fight against my will. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, definitely like Hope's gay community is so cool and they are so understanding of what it's like to grow up around um, a more conservative Christian community, which is awesome. Um, and so I've been very appreciative of that. Very uh, appreciative of CAPS and the other resources that are totally validating of um, sexualities. I work for SAC um, as one of the coffee house chairs and that team is just great people overall. And, but like I can also just be in group chats, like um, a certain group chat that I'm in tends to also have a lot of queer women in it. And so like that just kind of creates a good way of finding people and like identifying with people, especially as like some of these groups, we do have similar values as far as like, we're all women or like we're all women of color, stuff like that. We all tend to have more of the same ideas. And so like that makes it easier to like narrow it down of like people who we can trust and people who can be friends with. And then we kind of just find more things that we have like mutual interests over or like things that we can identify with, stuff like that. So I think just like by association, is the easiest way for me to find people. I think even as time goes on though, that bubble of LGBT folks really grows and because social media is showing more LGBT people and like creators and just like everyone in the world having more confidence to be out um, creates more of the confidence on campus for students to be out and to be themselves, especially as we realize that like who we are and that who we are doesn't really change anything other than our own self-acceptance. Um, and so like to see that confidence grow in people allows us to find that community and to have that bubble of like trust and communication and find people who we can identify with. It's, it's great. I think that um, the presence of PRISM offers impact, you know, if you wanna come out, if you wanna talk to us, um, and I think also when we're invited to spaces, like STEP having us in a conversation, um, I think it opens up to impacting the campus and impacting queer, queer students. Um, I know I've been impacted by PRISM's existence, um, you know, but I, we asked this question to our panelists who graduated and a lot of them had said something like, you know, I don't know if it would have impacted me in a good way or bad way because being at Hope, as a queer Christian student, I needed to learn, to learn and figure out how to do this, and someone else needed something else differently, and someone needed something different than that. Um, and so maybe it impacts someone. I hope it does. Uh, I think we all really, really care about queer students at Hope. I know I really do. Um, and I, I know that we keep the queer community in our thoughts, and we take a lot of action. 
Um, and yeah, just, you know, trying. Yes, I do have hope. Um, the optimistic side of me definitely sees that we are changing and becoming better and more accepting and loving um, as Hope College claims to love all. Um, but the realistic side of me also knows that because Hope College is a Christian campus, there are going to be a lot of struggles on the way. It's not gonna change overnight. Um, but yes, we are moving towards being better and being more accepting. But I think with the stigmas that are aligned with Christianity and being a conservative um, community, that it's gonna take a lot of time for things to get better for sure. Even though there's a lot of um, difficulties with being a lesbian at Hope's campus, I am so grateful I am a lesbian at the end of the day. I think it, um, does add to uh, my life. I think there's like a lot of fun parts about it. I think um, the more I like learn about my sexuality, the more I learn about like other parts of myself and um, the more I feel prepared to like tackle other parts of my life in the world because like that was a huge challenge to overcome, which is great. What do you love about being gay? Women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I like that I can be myself and that I don't have to find men attractive. Like, I, I don't think they are. Being gay, I can more, I can trust myself to be more emotionally vulnerable with my partner. While there are a lot of stereotypes about lesbians, but it's great, you can just be yourself. So at Hope College, um, if you wander around the halls of Hope College, you will see little round stickers that say safe zone. And those stickers, in, they're a rainbow, and they um, indicate that there is a faculty or staff member who's actually undergone a training and signed a pledge that they are open and affirming and um, that they are welcoming to students. That program has been on hold for about two years because the students who are running it graduated, but I know that PRISM is looking at reinstituting that in the spring, and so um, you can kind of watch for those to be popping up again maybe. If students are looking for ways to find support, I would say connect with GLOBE or PRISM and, um, and then talk to the members about who do they find supportive, who are the faculty they know they can turn to. Um, that can be very helpful. CAPS is a resource for students. Um, we're an open and affirming office on the on the campus and um, always have been and um, are available for students um, for all kinds of questions. In Holland, there's Out on the Lakeshore, which is a, a, a resource center. I think that if students talk to faculty and staff, they will find a lot of support on this campus. Well, if you're gay and queer, bi, pan, ace, transgender, on Hope's campus, and if you're watching this and you are QTPOC, queer trans person of color, um, good luck. You've got this. There are allies. Um, trust in few, but trust. And um, four years goes by fast. <laughs> Uh, I am not good at this, <laughs> okay? My advice for um, any closeted or out or whatever gay woman at host campus is to um, remember that uh, your feelings for people are valid. Um, the, yeah, you, the strong connection you feel with the same gender or um, genders in between also valid um, and you deserve better than to be around people who tell you that it's not. Uh, so like your life will change around right, right when you accept what you deserve and you start making the hard decisions to cut any homophobia out of your life and go out there and seek people who are actually good for you. Um, I don't have any good dating advice because I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, for people who are in the closet, take your time, find your people. Um, it really just don't push anything. Like, yes, people like time is progressing and people are getting better, but that doesn't mean that you have to come out. Um, you need to come out when you need to, when you feel comfortable enough and feel safe, especially. So find people you can trust, find people who will love you for you. Um, try and gauge where people are at before you tell them is what my suggestion is, just so that way you can make sure that you're safe. 
Um, but be yourself, do whatever makes you feel happy. Don't, ha don't force yourself to be anyone you're not. Um, you don't even have to tell people that you're gay. And when the time is right, you'll be able to tell people, you'll be able to come out, you'll be able to say, hey, I'm bi or hey, I'm trans. Whatever needs to happen, the time will be right when you know it. And how can cisgender students um, be supportive? I think in a couple of ways. One, if you wanna get really active, join PRISM and get involved there. General membership, uh, get involved in one of the committees, um, help with programming, um, celebrate at one of the coming out parties, uh, get involved in that way. I think you can also be really supportive by standing in the gap. So that space between um, a negative, hurtful comment that's made and the person who might be on the receiving end, jump in between there. I think it's what allies do. I think allies are the ones that turn to someone and say, what did you mean by that? Or that will um, walk over to someone and say, I didn't quite understand why that joke was supposed to be funny. Oh. <laughs> Right? We can stand in that gap, that place between. Um, and sometimes it might mean not saying a word, but going and standing next to someone. Or sitting next to someone. Just quietly. Um, if someone is directly addressing a person who's been cruel, to go and stand by them. You don't have to say anything. Just go stand next to them. Um, so I think we can stop a lot and address a lot by our physical presence, if it's safe. Um, if it's not safe, you can also be the one calling 911. So I think, I think uh, cisgender folks can be the ones asking the really positive questions in class. Um, if somebody's asking negatively, uh, you know, what's wrong with people who are gay? You can say, excuse me, but can we talk about um, some of the great studies on uh, same-sex marriage and adoption? <laughs> so, I mean, you can, uh, it could be the positive question asker. So it doesn't always have to be the negative thing, but um, I, think, I think allies have a great role to play in making, making the campus a place where everybody feels included and belonging and uh, grace and um, understood, understanding, right? Those things that we're striving for at Hope College. Straight people, be allies. Um, don't say, I support people who are gay or LGBT, but I don't, or I, I'm okay with people being gay, but I don't support it. Um, do better. Straight people have been horrible in general. Um, ask questions if you need to, but be respectful about it. Cause I've heard a lot of like, oh, why are you gay? I'm like, or how do you know you're gay? And I'm like, because I like women, because women are be better in my opinion. Um, so just tread carefully of how you ask questions when you do, but don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions to help increase your understanding. Keep an open mind and do what you can to support people within the LGBT community. Anything for the straights? Oh, straight people, yeah, um, please, please. Um, <laughs> I think just in general, I think every one of any sexuality, we just need to talk about how we interact. If you wouldn't say it to a man because he would take it as flirting, um, maybe think twice before you say it to a, a woman. Um, just recognize that like there are lesbians on campus uh, and they don't need any more confusion. Saying that you love them but you don't think their sexuality is um, okay, that's not love, so stop it. Like if you don't have the ability to fully accept someone's sexuality is valid, then please just do not waste their time and force them into a friendship. That's like just not okay. Stop cuffing your jeans. If you're not gay and you're straight, that's what I would like to say to straight people. Number one. Number two, if you're an ally, be an ally. If you have questions, ask questions. And I think say, like, you know, I don't really know how to ask this, but I think I need to so I can better understand how to be an ally. Being an ally doesn't mean having a gay cousin. Um, it means thinking that, you know, thinking and believing that your gay cousin should be happy and should have rights and should be protected. Um, and, and served and represented.
um, be a better ally, be a better you, because, um, we all live together, and, um, yeah, just do better, straight, straight people, I'm assuming you're allies, but if you're not, um, just try to be quiet, I guess. I was going to say I'm here for you, but I don't I don't know how I would be. I, I don't know who the fuck's watching this or how they will find me. <laughs> um, I'm single. <laughs> okay. Well, should I, can you tell me what to say, please? I think, I think you've got it. I think, I think I'm so good. sorry, everyone. Um, I'm assuming this is going to get like shared with Hope. Um, Hope College, you've got a lot of work to do, but you've got a lot of great students who are honestly kind of doing the work for you. So invest in your students, Hope College, and invest in projects like these. Invest in your women and gender studies programs, um, your communication programs, and your students of color. And I think when you invest, you'll see that the return is pretty beautiful. One of the reasons I love student projects, particularly like this one, is I think it can really be helpful uh, for students who might be sitting in a classroom hoping that no one sees them, that no one would ever identify, that this topic might touch them, might be a part of their lives. Um, and I'm always really hopeful that someone watching will feel empowered to reach out. Um, reach out maybe to one of the filmmakers, um, maybe to someone mentioned in the film, maybe someone who was recorded, um, just to talk. And even if they don't reach out, at least they know that on Hope's campus, these are people who support them and believe in them and wanna be helpful.